hiding millions of deaths with trend lines. A recent Substack post attacks figures that I've given for the deaths which followed on as a result of the transition of, to capitalism in Russia, which I put at about 12 million people over a 24-year period. These were originally published in How the World Works and rest on the graph there, which shows a dramatic rise in annual deaths in Russia from 1994 to 1990 to 94, and this higher death rate then persisted. The base year I used was 86 when perestroika commenced, and the red line under the curve amounts to about 12 million. The argument given was that against me was that. I didn't take into account the trend in the Soviet death rate. He says that death rates were already rising in the period before Perestroika and says that if you project death rates forward from 1960 to 1986, uh, if you project them forward, you'll get a much smaller number of excess deaths as a result of capitalist restoration. And he gives this graph here. But the problems, he actually uses 1964, sorry. The problems with this is, why does he choose 1964 as a base year? And why does he think that the expected death rates in a country should follow a simple straight line graph? Neither of these are justified. Why did he choose 1964? Well, he chose it because 1964 was a year with a very low death rate, and therefore it makes it easy for him to show a rising trend. 1964 was low. Now, we'll get into why it was low later, but it was arbitrary, but it gives him a nice rising curve, which you can use to write off this period of high death rate here. It's arbitrary because if he'd chosen neither 1950 or 19. 83 as his base year and taken the period from 1950 to 1986 or 1983 from 1986, he'd have got a downward sloping curve. So plotting arbitrary baselines between arbitrarily chosen start dates it predicts nothing or explains nothing. The problem is to identify the causes of exactly of actually observed deaths. Why did these deaths occur? Were the demographic or were the social causes for them? The explanation Fabrice Hegeliano gives is that it had nothing to do with social relations or demography, it's just that the Russians drink too much. And he presents a graph of alcohol consumption, which he says is the cause. Russian alcohol consumption fluctuates and this kills them off. Now, there's no doubt that heavy drinking can shorten your life. So it will be one factor affecting death rates. And if you correlate the figures he gives with the actually observed death rates over the period there is a 47% correlation. So there is a positive correlation. Not a very strong one, but a positive correlation. But you have to consider drinking as part of the social world. The level of alcohol production depends on the economic structure and on social conditions and on social policy. Now, up to 1965, the state didn't increase alcohol production per capita held it constant. Now it also happens that during that period the death rate was falling. Now if his account is uh, adequate it should have been stable rather than falling. After Kasigan, 
carried out some measures of economic liberalisation and rest restricted the straightforward direction of the central planning authorities, you got some increase in alcohol production. Then, after 1980, the state started restricting alcohol production again. Uh, so, the amount of alcohol being consumed in the Soviet Union depended on economic policy and on the resources that the state allocated to the alcohol production industry and the quotas it set the alcohol production industry. Once you had capitalist restoration and you had no planning, alcohol production shot up again. So even if we accept his argument that the Russians are all drunks, capitalism is still to blame for the rise in deaths after 1990 because it's capitalism that allowed them as much alcohol as the supposed drunken nature of the Russians wanted. Now, but you then have to ask, was vodka consumption the root cause of the deaths, or was the rise in vodka consumption itself an effect of the misery, unemployment, etc., produced by capitalist restoration? If unemployment and poverty increase, people seek relief in drink or drugs. And the same thing has been evident in the USA, where working class life expectancy has been falling. The immediate cause of death may be drink, drugs or violence, but these are side effects. These are side effects of the despair and poverty which has been hitting the former industrial areas of the USA. And this is so well recognised even by orthodox bourgeois economics that Angus Deacon, Deaton, Deaton got the Nobel Prize in economics for elucidating this relationship between economic misery, drug and alcohol consumption, and death rates. Now, what's the real explanation for why Russian death rates experience a dip going from 1950 to 1964, and then a slight rise after that? The explanation is the really skewed population pyramid that Russia had in 1950. It was hugely unbalanced due to the four major wars in the previous 50 years. The Russo-Japanese War, the First World War, the Civil War and the Second World War. You can see how skewed it is by comparing the Russian population pyramid in 1950 with a country that had been at peace and been in no wars during the same period. And I've chosen Uruguay. You can't choose any of the European countries because they're nearly all affected apart from Switzerland. And what you see for a normal population pyramid is numbers go down steadily as the population ages. There are fewer and fewer older people. Now that's not the case with the Russian population in 1950. It's got this jaggedy shape and there's a huge imbalance of um, more women than men. Now, that is a necessary result of wars. There's a big deficit of men who would have been of military age 1941 to 1945. There is a large cohort of people who were born just too early to have served in the military. There is also a significant number of women killed in the war. There's then a deficit of births in the period 41 to 45 because there were so many men in active service and there were no cho babies, be fewer babies being born. And there's a deficit of post-1945 births because there were so many widows. Now... This population was disproportionately under 25, and people under 25 have a low expected probability of death for the next 20 years. This cohort here, who survived the war from the relatively high birth rate that had been before the war, when they hit their 40s, 
they will start to experience mortality and deaths will start rising. You can simulate the effect of this. What I've done is I took, I couldn't obtain a life table, a life expectancy table for the Soviet Union or for Russia in 1950. So I took the Uruguayan one and it turns out the Uruguayan one has a higher expected death rate than the Russian one, but it gives you the shape of the curve you expect. So you extract uh, a life expectancy model by seeing how much does each cohort decline as you move up to the next age cohort. What is its likelihood of dying? You then apply that to the Russian population model and simulate it over time, adding in the actual births in Russia in each period. And what kind of curve do you get? Well, you get a rising curve. So the in innate tendency from the 1950s to 1970s due to the demographics was that death rates should be increasing because the population is aging. And the proportion of the population that are going to suffer from the diseases of old age are going to rise. Now, the actual Russian death rate was much lower than would have been predicted if you use the Uruguayan life tables because there were better social conditions in Russia. But that doesn't negate the expected shape. The improving social conditions were able to offset it for a while, but they couldn't offset the fact that you had a big bulge of people who had been born in the period, say, 1924 to 1939, who were starting to get to the ages where chronic diseases and diseases of old age would start killing them off. By the mid-1980s, you had a, a bit more balanced kind of population pyramid. You can still see that bulge that we previously identified in the low birth rate slot caused by the war moving up. But you can now simulate what would have, would have happened if there'd been no change in social conditions um, in the Soviet Union and that if the birth rate had not suddenly collapsed as it did as soon as capitalism was restored, the poverty and misery associated and the economic uncertainty produced a, a terrible fall in the birth rate. And if you factor in that kind of fall in the birth rate, that in itself raises the death rate um, because it's a, it shifts the age balance of the population. So, uh, second simulation, in this case, I constructed a cohort-based uh, life table for Russia, taking the population pyramid in, in 1980 and 1985, and comparing those two. And I then assume that the births per year don't change after 1985, and I project forward. And what do we get there? Well, we do get a rising death rate and um, the reason for this is that the assumed birth levels from 1985 projected forward are lower than the baby boom that occurred during the 1960s in Russia and one would expect as the baby boomers age, the or baby boom occurs in the late 1950s, uh, early 60s, as the baby boomers age, mortality was going to go up. And I'm assume this assumes no worsening of economic and social conditions. So when you're dealing with counterfactuals, are saying what would have happened if there had been no establishment of capitalism in Russia? Um, it's inevitably uncertain. And the plausibility of the counterfactual depends on the sophistication of the model you're using. 
And just plotting trend lines is the least sophisticated kind of model. Realistic models have to model actual population pyramids and make explicit assumptions about the life tables. My original figure was 12 million excess deaths over 24 years. Since I was just using spreadsheets to do this, it's tedious to do it in greater detail, actual year-by-year -year detail. I was doing it in five-year slots, and I only did three five-year slots of simulation, and I get 5.5 million excess deaths in the 15 years, 1991 to 2005. Now, this is not 12 million, but it's a shorter period, and it is still a very large number of excess deaths. Now, we know what actually happened. The excess deaths were sufficient to actually put the population into decline. Population had been rising throughout the socialist period, then it went into decline. So, the excess deaths are not something imaginary. They're there. You can see them. And you can see it also in life expectancy. The peak Soviet life expectancy was at 69 in, in the 1980s. By about 2005, it had fallen to 65. So, 15-year period, 4-year drop in life expectancy. The basic claim that I'm making that there were a huge number of people died, died prematurely as a result of the change to a capitalist economy, stands. Whether it was 12 million over 24 years or 5.5 million over 15 years, we can simulate that more in more detail if we had better data. But the basic point that huge number of people died can't be disputed.